Hello everyone and welcome back. Y'all, today we're looking at quadratic functions in standard form and we're going to graph them. Again, the objective is to graph quadratic functions in standard form. This is standard form right here. We've seen it before. AX squared plus BX plus C. You've seen that. And we just got done with vertex form. The nice thing about vertex form, it's pretty easy to find the vertex, right? Because it's HK. It's the X, um, X coordinate of the vertex and the Y coordinate of the vertex. It's easy to find if it's in vertex form. But it's not as easy to find if it's in standard form. And we need to find it in order to graph it. So how do you find the vertex? And graph of quadratic in standard form. Okay? That's today's essential question. And guys, if you look over here, the A operates the same way as the A in vertex form. If the A is positive, the graph is right side up. If the A is negative, the graph is upside down. Okay? Guys, remember when we had a quadratic in vertex form? Again, it was easy to find the vertex because of HK is listed here for you. And if you notice in vertex form, it says X minus H. And that's why when we would read that, it was always the opposite, All right? Because remember, in this case, H is one. So this would be written as X minus one. We always write it in the opposite. And if H was negative one, this would say X plus one, okay? And the K is always exactly as it reads, because that just says plus K. As we now, in standard form, it looks like this. Again, you've seen it before. How do you find the vertex? There's a formula. It comes from calculus. Right down here, that's how you find the X coordinate of the vertex. The formula is negative B over 2A. It's a simple formula. The B is in front of the linear term, X. The A is in front of the quadratic term. It's the first, the leading coefficient. All right, you put in the formula, you find the X coordinate of the vertex, that's the H. Then, once you find that, you take that value and plug it into the original equation. So basically it becomes AH squared plus BH plus C. Plug it back in and find out what the Y value is at the vertex. That's K. Once you do that, you have the vertex. All right. Again, use the formula to find the X value. Plug it back into your original equation to find the Y value. Also, guys, in standard form, there is one piece of information that's pretty easy to find, and that's the y-intercept. Again, when x is 0, that's when the function crosses the y-axis. That's the y-intercept. And when x is 0, as it shows down here, y is c. The c that hangs out at the end here, that is the y-intercept. Okay, it moves the graph up and down. We're not the vertex, it's the y-intercept, okay? Let's take a look at Desmos real quick. As I made this up, on the very top here, this is standard form. I remember A changes the shape of the graph or flips it upside down, okay? You all might remember that. Now C here, if you notice, C just moves it up and down. C is the y-intercept. So right there, it's 1. Here, it's 0. That's where it crosses the y-axis. It's 0. Back up here, now it's negative 1. Okay, so it moves the graph up and down because I'm changing the y-intercept. B is kind of the weird one. Guys, I'm leaving the y-intercept, so watch. It always has to go through the 1. But it kind of does move it horizontally. You see that it does kind of move it back and forth. 
but always staying through the one. Even if I went way out here, I can back out. It still kind of looks similar. All right, it's going through one. It has to stay through the one. Okay, I'll back that back up. Guys, also, if you notice, the way I did this, <clears throat> I think I made a link right to this page if you want to use it. Guys, as I change these things, you see how the H and the K down here? It's changing. All right, I can identify the vertex like that. Okay? The vertex is right there, 1, 0. Yep, that's it. 1, 0 is right there. Yep. And you can always use that too if you want. Let's look at a couple examples here. Here's example one. Let's say I'm going to graph this right here. 2x squared plus 8x minus 1. Well, first, it's pretty easy to find the y-intercept. It's 0, negative 1. See the negative 1 there? So, boom. You can just mark that point right there. Boom. That's where it, this function goes through that point right there. But then you got to find the vertex. All right? Use the formula. Negative b over 2a. So it's negative, and then 8 is on top. That's the B. And then 2 times A. A is also 2. 2 times 2 is 4. 8 divided by 4 is 2. It's negative 2. Then take the negative 2 and plug it in, in here where the X is, which is what I did right here. 2 times X squared. So that's negative 2 squared plus... 8 times x. Well, x is negative 2. Minus 1. I got negative 9. And that is where the vertex is. I put this into Desmos. And I did a screenshot. And that is what the graph really, really looks like. Okay? It really looks like that. Okay? Once you find those two things, you can graph it. Once you get the vertex, you can just go over 1, up 1. Over 1, up 3. Over 1, up 5. You can do it like that, okay? But it helps just to know where it crosses the, the y-axis too. And it's so easy to find in standard form. Why don't I just go ahead and mark it, all right? All right, this is example number 2. It says number 1. Now it's number 2. All right, guys, the y-intercept is easy to find, negative 5. I just come down to negative 5, boom, and mark it, okay? This says negative 3, so it's upside down. Find the vertex. Well, h is negative b over 2a. So there's a negative in front, there's a negative up top, and there's a negative on the bottom. Three negatives make a negative. Right, it's negative. These two negatives make it a positive, and then put that negative in front then. So negative 1, plug it in. Hey guys, I want to point something out. When you plug this in, you'll notice that the first value, the negative 3 and then plus 6, the second value, the second term, is always twice as big as the first one. That's how you know that you've done it right. All right, then just subtract 5 to it as well. So it's negative 2. I want to go back to the last example. You see how it was 8 minus 16? All right, at the vertex, that's going to happen. At the vertex, the linear term, the absolute value of it, will have twice the magnitude of the quadratic term, of the leading term. That will happen at the vertex. That's how you know that you got it right. All right? And again, this one's upside down. Once you say the vertex is up here, and you've already identified the y-intercept down here, you know it must be upside down, okay? All right, guys, right now, go ahead and fill out today's notes assignment and complete the summary. That's in the green folder. Guys, get ready for the second Zoom meeting. Make sure you please come. Guys, today's two vocabulary questions 
The first one, you're going to match a type of transformation with its description. Okay? And select which quadratic is in standard form. All right, the transformation part, I want you to think a little bit on that. All right? Thanks, you guys. That's it.